number that shows in the first sheet. Yeah. The treats and then in the, I, so one of the hits I, and then one of the. I want to say several of the of the. Oh, of the God. lesser successful. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, Frank and I actually were in one called Seed of Evil here, where I actually the director thought, oh, wouldn't it be a great experiment if Robin is naked at the beginning? I was a lot younger, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and I went. <laughs> and one of the cues for two of the other actors entering on stage was me taking everything off, like everything. And Pat Hamilton and George Vergakis were playing the two other leads, and they were sitting in the house, and the director had said, okay, when Robin starts taking off her underpants, that's when you stand up in, this, in the audience, and go, oh, this is disgusting, oh, this is terrible, and then you come around and you enter on stage, so that's sort of, you know, Okay, we only did this three times, and I thought, okay, I'm a good sport, and Frank Moore gave me a shot of brandy the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and the set had a ramp that went up the back of it, and uh, he was sitting at the top, and there was music going on, and I was absolutely terrified, and, uh, and uh, I knew I'd have to do this, and I was sitting on the sofa, fully dressed, as the audience comes in, you know, one of those pretentious openings. <laughs>
really liked it and wanted to do it. And, uh, and God forgive me, I took Mr. Big, who was about this high, and put him in a cocktail glass. It was about four feet tall. Um, that's the one decision that I really am appalled by now. Um, although he loved it. He loved everything about it. Um, he was unbearable with the women in the show. They finally all came to me, and I finally had to say, stop it or you'll be fired. He was basically crotch level. Uh, and, well, he, was, he had his problems. Um, <laughs> you know, people ask what's more, what's more dangerous, success or failure, and, and it's undoubtedly success, because success only confirms, it only tells you that everything you did was right, whereas failure tells you what you missed. Failure tells you what you didn't bother to think about. Failure tells you that what you thought was a certainty was at best an assumption and probably a wrong one. Failure is painful. Um, I came to a moment about the third week of rehearsal when I looked up at all my actors, and there were some splendid actors in that cast. Uh, not just Robin, but uh, Les Carlson. I mean, there was a whole bunch of good, good, good people. And I knew that I had not an idea left in my head and that it wasn't working. And now we're, we're, four, we're four days from opening. Oh. Okay. Uh, one scene worked in my memory. Yeah, that's really. Crazy. One scene worked, and it was mostly a scene of physical comedy. And it worked because the author had detailed it so perfectly. And the real fault was not the author's fault, it was mine. I hadn't demanded sufficiently of the author to give. Get more. This isn't enough. You can't just get away with this. But I didn't know. We were all amateurs. And this you should take comfort in. <laughs> uh, we created a theater and we were all amateurs, quite literally. The only body who had, the only person who had any professional experience at all was Jimmy Douglas. Um, and he had been down in Hollywood and, and, and he was kind of at sea a lot. Because certainly what we were doing, he wasn't used to at all. Frank had just done hair, too. You know, so yeah, again, it was yeah. like, you know, that's his first show. Really. Yeah, we were flying by the seat of our pants, that's for sure. So, you know, Sir Sam was open, and I went off wandering backstage looking for a rafter to hang myself. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I love doing it. It was so much fun to do. And uh, but we got over it. <laughs> oh, well, you want to continue with the, 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 the and physical environment, shall we say, of Terracon season one, and some of the work that you guys have done as technicians and designers in that kind of way. Yeah, it was very different back then. It was in the, the um, what I'm saying, when my, I was in sound, when my tape recorder was in old waters, real to real tape recorder, that was how sound was. Often breaking the tape going out on the floor because you just couldn't stop the show and you just kept going and you were worried about the tape or the editing during the show. And those nice big clunks. Yeah. In the small, yeah. in small space, and you clunk. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful lesson for an actor when a sound cue doesn't come. That's true. <laughs> the sound cue that is uh, semi crucial to the, to the scene. And, you know. Can't wait long. <laughs> <laughs> so that one. They always came. To us. <laughs> there was also the party one night when wine got spilled on the soundboard and blew it all up. Oh, <laughs> that's another story. We were very relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was a tough time. You, uh, if I'm going to say it was, a, it was a tough year. We there wasn't a lot of money in Terrebonne. We it was an old building, and um, we were slowly taking it over in pieces. But at, at that time, that first year, we had the main stage, a small room at the back, and the, and the lobby, and that was it. And there was um, uh, the older owners had spaces in the around it. And one of the things we showed was the, uh, uh, it was a, an old cookie board factory. So there was a lot of uh, old hardwood, uh, one by three. Hardwood uh, and we, were, we didn't have any money, so we tried to make the sets out of hardwood at the time. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs>
That's its essence. Um, it's very easy as an actor to think it's all about me, uh, or to think it's all about the two or three or four people you're having a scene with. Um, you can learn from everybody. Uh, you can learn from the guy running the lights. You can learn from the guy running the sound. Uh, you can learn from the person in the front of us. Um, often you can learn, most people have seen more theater than, than you have. Um, and, and they might have a finer instinct for what's going to cook and what isn't than you do. But I can't emphasize it enough. Theater is collaborative art. And that means everybody. And when a show works, it doesn't work just because it's brilliant acting, brilliant directing, brilliant design. It works because everybody has worked. Everybody. There was a spirit that first year, in that sense, that there was an incredible spirit that there was that first year, and whether we were zooming it or flying by the or fans, but you're talking about auditions, my audition here, but I walked in one day and said, How can I help? And they, they said, Sweep the floor. <laughs> The building was you just took it right out of my mouth because when I was hired as theater manager, I swept the floor. <laughs> Um, 